Welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at automating the lens correction feature. This is a kind of a hidden feature in Photoshop. It's it's a very automated version of lens correction. I'm not sure how else to describe it. Um, but what you can, uh, where you can find it, I should say, is under File, Automate, uh, Lens Correction, as you may well expect. This is different than the adaptive wide-angle lens correction. It's different than the uh, wide-angle correction you would get in Camera Raw, in the Camera Raw Editor. We're going to cover all that stuff in this tutorial, though. Before we get started, it's a new month, and we've got a new sponsor, GraphicStock.com, and April is GraphicStock's Creative Rewards Month. Now, GraphicStock.com com is a subscription service. You subscribe, you get as many downloads uh, for stock photography as you want. It's unlimited. Unlimited downloads if you sign up. They got like over 300,000 graphics and vectors and photos, all kinds of great stuff, all royalty free, of course. Um, the offer for tutvid.com users, 39 bucks for six months of graphic stock. There's a link down in the description. You've got to check it out. For the automate lens correction feature, well, I've got this interior architectural photo that I took. We're going to um, use auto lens correct to correct this. I'm going to go back to the bridge, however. Um, and you can see right here I've got three versions of the photo because we actually used it in an HDR image in an earlier tutorial. We're going to lens correct one of these because it does need some lens correction. And then we're going to batch lens correct um, a number of images here all together. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to Photoshop and choose File Automate. Uh, da, 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 there it is, Lens Correction. Now, here's where things get somewhat complicated, but not really. You can choose uh, files or an entire folder of images. That's great. We're just going to hit Browse and find the one file we want. And that one file is just this first .dng file. It's a camera raw file, Adobe's digital negative format. Hit OK. Um, this could be a .nef file or a .c2r or cr2, whatever the Canon uh, raw file is as well. Uh, destination folder, file type. In this case, I'm going to choose to save it as a PSD because I haven't done any editing to this image and I want to be able to continue editing it. I don't want to just flatten it as this little 8-bit JPEG that really... Um, it really is much, much, much more difficult to work with. So I'm going to choose PSD, and it's going to save it in a folder from where the image is, but in a subfolder called Results. That's sort of like the default uh, setting there. Lens Correction Profile. We're going to tell Photoshop and Camera Raw, look, just match it to the best profile as best you can tell. I believe the image was shot with a 17-40 to 40 f4, uh, Canon's uh, sort of intermediate wide-angle lens, if you will. Then you can choose the correction options that you wish to correct. You can even do things like chromatic aberration, geometric distortion. Well, obviously, you want to, you want to correct the distortion. Uh, you can choose to auto-scale the image. I'll tick that on. You can also choose to either lighten or darken the vignette. Again, it's going to be more of an automatic feature. I'm going to leave that checked off. I don't want to mess with that. I'll manually handle a vignette if one is there. And then what's left if, well, I guess if you don't auto-scale the image, you've got some edge options. Um, I'd leave this set to transparent. I don't want it filling in a color or trying to extend the edge automatically. Again, I'll take care of all of that with content aware fill or cloning or healing or, you know, I'd rather handle that myself. So I'm going to hit OK and Photoshop's going to do its thing. It's going to bring the image in. It's going to, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then it's going to save out an image here. You're going to see it's going to be writing a PSD file. And if we go over to the Adobe Bridge, Sure enough, we have a folder here called results. If I open that up, I have this O3A.psd. I'm going to open this up in Photoshop, and let's just look to see what this auto lens correction feature did. So it's it's going to take a moment to open. It's a fairly large file. Um, they're just big images that came out of the camera. And when it opens it, we can see that it, it doesn't really look all that great necessarily, um, but that's really because of lighting and uh, color grading that still needs to be done. If we look at it compared to the image that doesn't have any lens correction, you can see that, sure enough, the edges have been pulled a little bit straighter. This still needs to be leveled off. That's more of a rotation and cropping issue, not necessarily a lens correction issue. But you can see it definitely has attempted to correct some of the distortion of uh, that 17 to 40 millimeter lens. And we can just select all these adjustment layers. We can drag all these bad boys over and drop them on this layer. It's a little too high contrast. Whoop! I'll open up my levels adjustment here, pump some, uh, pump some light into the shadows and tone down the highlights. And we have, you know, I mean, it's not it's not the full HDR image, but we have something that's somewhat comparable. And we've got our, uh, you know, automated 
hyper automated uh, lens corrected image. It still needs a little bit of work on the edges, but look, you could do this to an entire folder full of images, right? Like that folder we have over there in the bridge, we could do it to an entire folder full of images and just, you know, one by one Photoshop will knock them down and uh, apply lens correction to help get you a much more uh, corrected image. Now, if we didn't want to use the, the very automated lens correction, we have some other options as well. Um, first and foremost is convert the actual image layer uh, to a smart object so we can do that uh, well let's actually let's lock this layer again and I'll show you exactly how I did that um, I'm gonna choose oh new whoop, layer new background from layer all right so we have like our background image it's just a PSD we've opened up um, even if we don't have any of these adjustment layers, it doesn't matter because what we're about to do will work with all these adjustment layers. So you have your background image, you simply right click on it and choose convert to smart object. Boom. All right, great. That's easy. And once it converts to the smart object, we can do a couple things. We can apply a, a camera raw filter to it. Now, I'm not going to do that here. Uh, we're going to touch on the camera raw filter on the actual raw file. Instead, we have adaptive wide angle. We do also have lens correction, but adaptive wide angle is kind of like lens correction, but with more features. We're going to do adaptive wide angle here, and this is not really an adaptive wide angle tutorial, so we're going to rip through this uh, fairly quickly. Um, let me make this window a little bit smaller so you can see everything. All right, so you can see we have here a version of our image, and it's sort of started applying this correction, if you will. I mean, it's really, you know, bowing it, and you can see the walls very obviously bowed and things like that. We have different corrections we can apply. The auto, which I don't really like. Uh, we have full spherical, which is not going to work with this image. You need a specific aspect ratio, and it just works a little bit differently. Fish eye is very extreme, so we're going to roll with perspective. So perspective, we have options like choosing the focal length of the lens. In this case, Photoshop has detected, hey, this was shot at 17 millimeters, which I believe is correct. I'm pretty sure I shot this at, you know, wide open 17 millimeters. We also have a crop factor. Um, and this was shot on uh, my older 5D Mark II. So it has a crop factor of just under, you know, being perfect, you know, as far as 1.00. 1, 1 um, so we can specify, we can, you know, playing around with the crop factor, you can actually get some interesting results. You can see you can go to like an extreme, extreme fisheye, which is not all that great. Let's just roll with the 0 0.98. I'm not going to mess with that too much. Or you can tick on as shot. That's going to get you the same effect. Um, Increasing the focal length, by the way, can tend to give you a little bit less distortion right off the bat. Now you might say, oh, well, I want less distortion right off the bat, of course. I'm going to stick with 17 millimeter though, because here's another way that you can begin forcing things to go straight. You have this tool up here. Um, and what you can do with this tool is draw out lines across areas of your image that should be straight. So for instance, I know that here above the window should be straight. You can see Photoshop knows there's a bow in it and it automatically follows the bow. And when you let go, it forces that to be straight. The same thing with the edge of this wall, right? Like you can see how it's just this crazy bend. All right, I'm going to draw that and it's going to force it to go straight up and down. Great. Um, across the bottom of the window, that also needs to be straight, right? So boom, forces that to be straight. Uh, this diagonal this diagonal line here along the edge of this window, that should be straight. Obviously, these little these you know frame pieces in between the window, those should be straight, right? So that's going to force that to go straight. Let's go with this guy out here. So this, obviously, it's very, very difficult. You can't really automate this whole process that we're doing here. So it's not going to be of a ton of value to you if you're, uh, you know, creating an automated, uh, you know, or you're trying to do this, excuse me, to an entire uh, folder full of images, if you will. You can see the other side of the, uh, the other side of the mat here needs to be straightened out. And there's all kinds of areas that you can just go in and straighten using this feature. Um, and of course, then once you've done that, oh, let's straighten this pillar up and down. So I'm just looking for lines that should be straight up and down and straight across. And I'm applying or I'm dragging this line across them. So Photoshop will say, all right, well, let's kind of force this lens correction, but keep as many of these lines as straight as we can possibly keep them. I keep right clicking and there we go. So we've made that straight as well. Go ahead and hit OK. And Photoshop's going to take a second and it's going to apply that adaptive wide angle. Now, the reason that I made this a smart object is because we can always shut it off we can see there's what the image looked like before. There's what it looks like now. So you can see it almost looks like it's zooming everything in. And sometimes in real estate photography, you want the room to look, you know, much, much larger, which is why we shoot using these wide angle lenses. So maybe you don't want this kind of extreme uh, lens correction, but you can always double click on adaptive wide angle here and go in and tweak and adjust it if you like. You can change the focal length, make it maybe make it even a little wider angle or not. Whatever you want to do, you can do that with adaptive wide angle. So this can be very helpful because you can apply it as a smart filter. So that's great. 
great. And of course, you say, oh, look at all the stuff it's left out. Well, we can always use the crop tool and don't choose to delete cropped pixels because then you can just go ahead and crop your image in a little bit like this, a little bit like, whoop, wrong way, let me undo that. A little bit like that. Drag the edges in just a touch. All right, something like so. And we've cropped it into this and we can always, you know, using the crop tool, well, it's going to re-render the smart filter, um, using, uh, because we used, uh, because we didn't, excuse me, delete the cropped pixels with the crop tool, I can just click once anywhere and I can always bring back and get stuff back if I need to. But also when we edit adaptive wide angle, we can, you know, sort of shrink things back into place, if you will. So that's a little bit on adaptive wide angle. I know that's not necessarily what this tutorial is about, but hey, it's still good knowledge to have. And for the third kind of lens correction I want to cover, over here in the Adobe Bridge, if you actually open up a RAW file, Command or Control R to open up the camera RAW editor, by the way. I'm going to take it out of full screen mode so we can see what's going on. Yeah, it was shot with a 5D Mark II. Uh, this was done several years ago. So what we have here is I'm just going to boost my shadows just so we can see what's going on here. Maybe increase the exposure a little bit, but then, you know, knock highlights and whites way down. All right, so we have an image, um, and we've started correcting it a little bit, maybe warm it up just a touch. Um, we have this little tab here. You can see the lens corrections tab. When you have a raw image, and yes, you can see it's it, it Photoshop knows or the Adobe Camera Raw knows this was shot at f13, 3.2 seconds, ISO of 100, using a 17 to 40 millimeter lens, and it was shot at 17 millimeters. So if I tick on enable lens profile corrections, this is another form of automatic lens correction. Again, it's not the batch processing that you can do in Photoshop, but this is automatic. Canon, or excuse me, Adobe has Canon's lens profile um, on file here, and it can say, look, it was shot with a Canon using that 17 to 40 f4 lens, so go ahead and correct as we would expect for that lens. You can see I uncheck it, I recheck it. So it's going to do a lot of that automatically for you, and it does a really, really good job. You can even go into manual here, and you can do things like, you know, apply a little bit of rotation if the image needs rotation one way or the other. Um, you can do some things like adjust the vertical plane if the image is looking skewed one way or or the other and the same thing with the horizontal plane this can be very very useful uh, depending on the kind of image you're shooting or where you're positioned when you shot it all great stuff and of course you can do the actual pin cushion um, dist distortion changes um, if you need to go in and just manually tweak something and really make something work for you that way um, and of course you have lens vignetting options in both just the uh, the profile itself or the manual options I'm going to get rid of all the manual options here just set all that stuff back to zero under profile you can use the distortion slide or just to choose how much you're correcting or not correcting the distortion depending on the look you're going for. So there are a ton of options when it comes to lens correction in Photoshop and there's actually still another lens correction option in Photoshop but I almost never use it so I'm not going to cover it here. Um, and of course you can open uh, this file in uh, Photoshop. Just go ahead and hit open image and it would open it up in Photoshop. And you can see we have just our nice you know, 16-bit file that we're ready to go ahead and do whatever we need to do with it. So for lens correction in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.